this is Andrew Logue and Chad Leistico, Des Moines Register Sports Writer, and I'm the Iowa, one of the Iowa football beat writers. Uh, we're taking a time here. Rick Brown usually joins us, but he's at Iowa Hawkeye Basketball Media Day today. So Chad's joining us, uh, first year sports editor, and you can give us a fresh outlook on the Hawkeyes. And what did you think, uh, Michigan State? The better team won the game, but I think you, you felt like Iowa left some things on the field. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I thought going in, that Iowa actually probably had the personnel to match Michigan mm -hmm. State. I just thought it would be a game of turnovers, and it really wasn't. It was really a game of Michigan State kind of uh, opened some of Iowa's weaknesses and exposed mm -hmm. them. Um, I thought the the uh, offense was uh, a little bit off kilter a little bit. Um, only three rushing attempts in the second yeah. half, I believe, three yeah. play calls that were rushes. And, um, it just didn't really seem to fit the Kirk Ferentz template of victory. It didn't. Uh, the one stat that jumps out, 23 rushing yards, and the punter on the fake punt has 25. We've all heard that. Um, I, I think it was an impact, too, and Ferris downplayed it, but Cavante Martin Manley being hurt, Wiseman being hurt. When you lose not only veteran guys, but kind of security blanket guys, guys they count on, uh, I just think that that took them out of sync. I don't think they ever really recovered from that, despite the two sharp-looking drives late in the second quarter. Yeah, and I thought... You know, Jake Rudock is definitely a great game manager, you mm -hmm. know, six games into his career, but I don't think he's the comeback type of quarterback that you, you didn't expect him to just lead the Hawkeyes down the field for two touchdowns late in the game. At least I Not did. yet. Oh, I'd yeah. say not yet. Yeah. I think in a year or two, or you might have that, yeah. but at this point, you're still kind of stretching it. How much was the fake punt, do you think? It was almost symbolic. You know, in the end, it was three points, and it was a two-possession game. But it's almost symbolic. It was almost, here we go again. It was almost, this is what I've been complaining about with Coach Ferentz all this time. I mean, what's your take on that? Well, I, I remember watching the Iowa-Wisconsin game 2010. Three, year, three years ago, and, and it just it boggles my <laughs> mind that you, that you can give up yeah. something that obvious so often. And, and to, coupled with the onside kick fiascos of the last couple of years, it's definitely, <laughs> maybe it is the best approach to not give that kind of thing up because really other than the Western Michigan game, Iowa has not been dangerous on punt returns as it is. No, and let's be honest, no knock on KMM, but that was Western Michigan. We right. had the big day for. Now you come up to the midseason, and, and you know, in my opinion, I think a 4-2 and two record might have been what you would have taken preseason. Uh, it feels now like almost they could have had more. Where is Iowa? Where have you seen progress-wise? Well, I think when you look at the schedule, at least when I did, I, I saw the first six games as, as all winnable games. The last yeah. six games, there might be one <laughs> winnable. Tough. I mean, there's only it's one tough. game where Iowa will be probably favored, and that's yeah. at Purdue. Um, Progress-wise, the defense is, is actually better than I expected mm -hmm. it to be. And even against Michigan State, there were some deficiencies with the, with the you know, giving up the big pass play on the blitz. But Defensively, I think that yeah. that's where their bread is buttered right now, and, and I think going forward they'll be able to stay in more games um, than I thought maybe they would have earlier in the season. I don't think they'll get blown out in Columbus. No. I don't think they'll get blown out uh, by Michigan or Northwestern, um, but I also think they'll have a tough time winning those games. If I was given uh, grades, I think I would go with uh, a solid B for the defense, C-plus for the offense. And I think they're going to get better. It may not show up statistically, but I think they're going to get better. And I think it really looks good next year. Special teams, you know, a couple weeks ago might have been in that C-B range. you almost got to give them a D now. They've yeah. been burned on fake punts twice. Yeah, Northern and, Illinois and, as well. And kickoff coverage. I mean, Minnesota, that's how they got their only seven points of the game. and, and um, it, it, yeah. It's clearly Iowa's weakest point right now to me. Yeah, and now you go Ohio State, which kicks off a tough, fairly tough six-game stretch. And what I've been telling people all along is I do think Ohio State's dicey as far as maybe getting run out of the field just because of that atmosphere at the horseshoe. But I keep telling them, somewhere in this, they're going to have a chance to steal a couple games. There's going to be some fourth quarters with Northwestern, Wisconsin, Michigan, and they're going to have a chance to do something. I want to see what they do in that situation. They're outmanned, I think, five of those opponents. But I think that defense is good enough. They're going to have their chance to knock one or two of those teams off. On the other hand, I wouldn't take Purdue for granted because that's very much the kind of game. Remember, we go back a couple years ago with Indiana, and you go, oh, they'll beat Indiana. <laughs> and then uh, Jeremiah Hunter gets beat on a pass coverage, and the guy drops the ball. But, you know, there's kind of out there. 
Um, what are you saying for? What do you want think this team needs to do in the next six to seven weeks? Well, I think Rick Brown is not here today. Mm -hmm. He's covering Iowa basketball media day. Um, he and I were talking. I think, I think Ohio State you pretty much chalk up as a loss. Yeah. But I think Northwestern, I think is beatable, um, just because Iowa's strength is in the linebacker play. Um, Northwestern likes those short passes. I think the linebackers can kind of chew those up. And I think Iowa has a chance there. I don't. I don't think Iowa goes 0 and 4 at home. I don't think they. That do. I agree. Yeah. I would tend to agree. You get a feeling they're going to be one of them. Would it be a little poetic justice if this time it was Iowa as the underdog, Northwestern on the roll, having won a bowl game last year, 10 wins, and and maybe Iowa could turn the table of some of the frustration uh, Hawkeye fans felt in the 2000s when it was the uh, the spunky Wildcats pulling off the upset. Yeah, I'd, I'd right, right now I'd say six and six is probably yeah. where I see Iowa finishing. Because I agree, I think they'll they'll get one you don't expect, and I do yeah. think they're they're big enough and uh, strong enough up front to beat Purdue. Okay. Well, hey, we'll keep you uh, tr starting coverage. We'll have some this week chats. We'll also uh, be doing uh, gearing up for the Ohio State game next week. So stay tuned to Hawk Central and Des Moines Register .com.